What's up YouTube, we are back again. I'm Danny James and in today's video we are going to learn how to make this colorful scattered text which is really good for title intros whether that's for a music video or a vlog or you can literally just use it on any video you're making. If you're new here consider subscribing, give this video a like and let's jump right into it. I like this text effect a lot uh, but I haven't seen it being used by many people. I saw it used on Davido's video and for Calistic the director uses these colorful texts really well and you see they also have this bouncing and some sort of animation happening which it's not really common to see so we're going to try to do this on Adobe Premiere and we're going to also work with Photoshop so let's jump right into it. On my timeline I have a version of the same which I just did and I think it turned out really well. So it's really short because this is how titles in music videos appear, very brief. Now we're going to do the same thing. So I'll delete uh, this nested sequence which has this text effect and we're going to do it from scratch. Now we need to start on Photoshop, but before we can go there, we need to have sort of a reference frame. So with our reference frame, we're going to pick a point in the timeline whereby we know we'll bring this text. Now it will help us envision this better so I'll just come right here to export frame. If you cannot find this tool, uh, just come on your buttons editor and that little camera should be right here. So I will export this frame, I'll have it go to my desktop, that's okay. Now we're gonna come back so let's go on Photoshop and open. On Photoshop you're going to create a 1920 by 1080 layer so I'm going to come right here on film and video and pick this right here. I'll hit on create. Once I'm here, I'll drag my reference picture so it's right here on my desktop. So I'll just bring it in. So here's our reference frame uh, and it's and it's right where we need it. I will link this website below so that you can also follow along and it will help us create this ransom text. Uh, all you have to do, I'll type in the name of the artist. So in this case, we're going to use the name Davido. And then it will how it will take a few seconds and then it will clip out our letters. Now you have this first selection. If you don't like this, you can click again on ransomize to get a different output. Okay, with this one I'll just pick uh, some of the letters I like. Uh, I don't really like any one of them. So let's just go on. Uh, with this ransom note, we'll just keep on hitting ransomize and it will give us different outputs every time. And once you see something that you like, all you have to do, you don't have to copy the entire word as it is. So I'll right click on here and hit copy image. That's on the letter D and I'll come right here and paste it. So I have that layer right here. I'll come back again. I'll pick this letter A, copy image, come back to Photoshop, hit Control V just to paste it. And I'll go on like that. Now I'll change these outcomes. I want to ransomize once again. Okay, I like this V, so we'll go on with this one. I'll paste it. Uh, I like this D. Let me just take it, copy image, and I'll paste it. So I'm left with letter I and O. So I'll keep on ransomizing. You can do this as many times as you want. Okay, um, I like this I and also the O. So I'm going to put them right here and the O. Now I have all these layers here. I'll try to I'll highlight on all of them first on these text layers hit ctrl T and I will enlarge all of them just like that and then I'll now separate them so I'll click okay now I like these for starters I want to make them look a little bit rusty for the look that I want to go we can do anything we want so I can click on this D and hit ctrl T right click there and you can do something like a warp now this will help you distort it in different forms uh, like this so you can you can really make the edges how you want like that so far we have this sort of rustic look but it would have been okay if we went with these layers just as they were now all you have to do we need to save this folder save this file save as and then we're going to save it as a photoshop file let's name it the video once it's saved it's time to go back to our adobe premiere so we can close this back to our timeline now it's time to import that file all you need to do go to file hit import wherever your photoshop files where they go just find it so it's right here, Davido, 
double click on it. After that, it will bring up this pop-up menu, uh, change from merge all layers to individual layers, and then you can scroll through. I will disable the background, which was white, and also our reference layer, and then I'll hit OK. After importing these layers, now it should be pretty much straightforward. Uh, it's just a matter of putting them and aligning them on our timeline. So I'll pick them in order. So you can see they line up pretty much well. So this looks good. You can go on with it as it is. Now, in case you want to learn how to make them sort of have that bumpy and jumpiness, we'll go and add keyframes. So I'll click on this one. I'll go to our effect controls. I'll enable stopwatch for position and we'll add keyframes. Now, I'll put this letter D just slightly below and then I'll go five frames later. I'm holding shift and my right arrow key once to go five frames and then I'll put it right up once again just observe this one and then i'll go five frames later put it down try not to be aggressive and lower these values much just offset them a little bit so if we look at this one That looks okay. It doesn't have that jumpiness and scatteredness. So only way to do that, highlight on all your keyframes, right click on it, go to temporal and is out. After that, you can enlarge this screen. We need to push this right here so that they can always start slow and then they go fast, then they go slow and then fast, slow, fast. So if we look at it, it has that scatteredness that grumpiness and you'll do the same with those other letters so i'll come to letter a and i'll add a stopwatch i'll try to begin with offsetting this just slightly and then five frames later the letter a will go down now what you'll observe once i go another five frames later from this one it will be going from an opposite direction with this letter d now the letter d is in the middle i'll put this letter a right above just a little, make these tweaks very minor. From there, you don't really have to do it all manually, just highlight on those keyframes, hit Ctrl C, and then go five frames later and paste them. So let's preview. Again, we need to make these keyframes have that grudginess. them on is out and then expand here so that you can see these keyframes and push that one like that so that should be okay now after these two after we've done the keyframes for these we can copy paste or this instead of doing the entire work now i'll go to my letter d the layer I'll copy and then I'll go to this V which is the third layer and I'll paste these attributes. I'll also paste the same attributes. I'll skip uh, this other one and go to the letter D. I'll right click and I'll paste those attributes. Now I'm doing that so that they can always alternate. Now I'm going to copy from the second one which was letter A. I'm going to copy these keyframes. I'm going to the letter I. I believe I'll right click and then I'll paste those attributes. I'll also go to the last layer which was letter O and I'll paste those attributes. Now if I look at it, they both have that jumpy feel. So you can highlight on all of them and nest. The advantage of nesting, it gives us two options. It will actually give us a smoother timeline to work with. And also in case you feel like uh, the speed of the text is a little bit too fast or too slow, you can adjust it using the speed uh, parameters. Now, instead of using these speed parameters, I'll use the rate stretch tool. It does pretty much the same thing. It's right here. If I extend the time, 
right here it will make this animation goes a little bit more slower so i'll make it longer and you can see the impact so the clip will be playing at 57 percent speed for the text so that will mean uh now what i've done it will do the same animation but at a 57 percent speed so it's kind of that speed which you want and in case you need it faster you can always reduce the time now it's at 160 percent speed and that doesn't look good so i leave it just as it is this looks dope now you'll have to apply the same principles in case you want to create more text layers and you need to add more variations to this you can do the same thing that i showed you if you made it this far thank you for watching this video in case you end up doing something like this just tag me on instagram my handle is right beside the screen in case you have any questions suggestions or queries just leave them down on the comments section and i'm happy to interact with you guys my name is danny james hope to see you in the next one cheers